Hello and welcome to another episode of Baking for Change. I'm your host, Wendy Pauls, and we have a familiar face back on the program today. Our guest baker is Daniela Svara. Perfecto. Yes. I am so thrilled to be back. Oh my gosh, it was so fun last time and we I'm looking blast. so forward to today because it's apple season. Apple season. So last time Daniela joined us on the program, we featured peaches mm. and made so many delicious things. If you haven't seen that episode, you need to go back and watch it. Today, we are featuring apples. It's apples. apple season and we're not just making one thing, we're making lots of beautiful stuff because who would want to enjoy just one delicious thing with apples? So, yes, and amazing. Yeah, and kicking it off, we've got some homemade apple cider. Cheers. Cheers. To, to a new episode. Mmm. Delicious. Homemade. Took me a little while this morning to make it. Totally worth the early wake up. So, what are we starting with today? Okay, so, I mean, there's so many beautiful desserts, but what's everyone's favorite? A classic apple pie. So, mm -hmm. that's what we're going to make today. And, obviously, it's going to be from scratch. And we've picked up some beautiful ingredients to make everything with. And again, because I wake up so early, you're helping me bake them. You're taking chances here, but I will do my best. That's okay. I have yes. full faith in you. It's awesome. Yes. Okay. And confession, uh -huh. I have never made an apple pie. What? I know. I've made apple crisp, but I've never made an apple pie. So here we go. Beginner again. Okay, great. Well, we're making an apple crisp today, so you're handling that then. Okay. Let's Sounds put your like skills a plan. to the test. All right. Oh, and don't forget, if you want to bake along with us, the ingredient list is on the website. Get your stuff ready and join us because when we get to that part of the show that you now know is my favorite part, then you can join us in the tasting also. So get your stuff together and get ready because we're going to get started. We're going to get started. Okay, so walk us through what we're doing. Okay, perfect. So there's two steps to making an apple pie. Mm -hmm. The crust, of course, the pastry flake, and then obviously the filling, the apples. What so about the eating part? Well, yeah, obviously, <laughs> but that's gonna come after we bake it and gotcha. we're gonna sit and enjoy it beautifully with more apple cider. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. we're gonna make the dough first, uh, the pastry flake, and then we're going to mix the apples. So. With the pastry flake, we've got our bowl, and we will start mixing the ingredients. Do you so want me to dump for you? Oh, thank I have you. Dumping skills. Is Amazing. There an order? Okay. So, what have we got here? We're going to start with your flour. Quantity? The two and a half cups of flour. Okay. Got it. Okay. Mm hmm. Oh, there's a little bit more in there. And a pinch of salt. Do I have to literally pinch, or did you already pinch Whole the Whole thing, quantity? it's already pinched. Okay. Pinched. Pre pinched. Pre pinched. Yep. A pinch ish of sugar. Okay, sugar. The most important part yes. of the flake is the butter. So we ended up using one cup of butter. Yes. And we put the butter in the mix. Yep. And then you're going to be mixing with your hands Correct. again. Correct. Yes. Yes. You just love getting in there. I do because, you know, I can actually feel what the texture is supposed to feel like. And it's just the way I was taught when I was little. And it's just the way I've seen every single, you know, wonderful young at heart woman that I've ever met do it. And I find that that's the best way to gauge. Okay. And our final ingredient is cold water. Correct. And yep. we did actually end up using about t seven tablespoons of water. So that gives us a beautiful flaky crust and you'll get to taste it later to confirm mm. and validate. Mm -hmm. Just a quick reminder that we like to support the work of UNICEF Canada. So please visit our website for a link where you can go make a small donation to help us make a change. We are going to start by peeling the apples okay. and then we're mm -hmm. going to put them in a bowl after we have them cut into um, pieces Okay. and then we will go into giving them their beautiful flavor that's going to go into the pie. Amazing. So let's give you a knife because All right. you're this working is, as well. This is dangerous people. <laughs> okay so what we're going to do is we're going to work with the Goldens because they have a nice texture to them and they bake really really well. 
Um, unfortunately, the way I learned to peel and cut from my mom and my grandmother is to hold everything in my hand and not necessarily on the cutting board. So, yes. so you want me to do one of these as well? Absolutely. Okay. That would be great. Okay. Did you take your... I did. Okay. You did. So what we're going to do is just peel it very easily. See, I told you you're going to be end up making fun of me with my cutting skills. No, Don't no, mock no. me, okay? Not everybody is a chef here. Oh my gosh, you're doing so great. What are you talking about? And at the end of the day, truth be told, if you really think about the best bakers and the best um, grandparents, which usually are the best bakers, they do everything as raw and simple as possible. True. Whoops. And we love the memories they give. Okay, so while I'm, you know, cutting this, tell me, do you ever have... Mm -hmm. A recipe go bad. Do you have a recipe gone wrong story? Do you ever Absolutely. botch it? Because oh I had God. this happen last night, right? Really? Okay. I was trying a new recipe. I was, I had a craving for pad thai, actually. Ooh, love that. And day. I, actually, it tasted fine. But when I was finished with everything in the pan, yep. I turned around and looked on my counter and I was missing like two ingredients that I prepared the ingredients and never added them. Oh, no. It was still yummy. But I thought, rookie mistake. So tell me if you've made some some mistakes in baking or cooking. Okay, so let me let me first say it's not just a rookie mistake. Okay. Even the most advanced and expert chefs make some mistakes. Make lots of mistakes. Oh, okay. Thank you for keeping it PG. I wasn't going to, but yes. For me, the beautiful thing is that being in the kitchen actually gives me peace and tranquility. Mm, Put my music mm -hmm. on, do my dancing, and I just absolutely love being in the kitchen, especially because I know that whatever result of my making is, it's going to be shared with somebody I love because that for me is an expression of love. So mm -hmm. I love you, Wendy. Oh, I love you. I love you. Now, I am going to critique that um, uh -oh. if my mother were here, she'd yeah. be very upset that you're cutting I, so much of I the know. Peel. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm sitting here doing this, and I'm like, there's going to be people at home going, oh, my gosh, she's wasting so much apple. I know, okay? I'm a beginner. Don't judge me. Okay. I'm trying. Well. Okay, I'll try to do better. I'm, I'll try and concentrate more. Here's something interesting for you. So we, we also talk about waste, and that's mm -hmm. one thing that I don't like doing in my kitchen. So as crazy as it sounds to uh -huh. so many people, you can actually take those, boil them, and make a little bit of an apple cider with them. So do oh. a nice flavored with them, or even just boil them, add a little bit of a cinnamon stick, okay. and you've got some nice aroma for your home. Are we sticking with just the one variety, right? No, We're you can these? start mixing. No? Now, here's oh, the trick okay. to mixing the apples, which okay. I love doing as well. If you have a specific textured apple, you're going to mm -hmm. want to mix certain textures, Okay. the same mm -hmm. texture. Because remember, when they're in the oven, they bake at different times and they bake ah, different ways. And gotcha. so the cooking okay. is very different. So, and so what would complement what we're doing currently? Truth be told, I would complement them with a Paula. Okay. So Which the Paulas is, are, that? that's exactly what a Paula is. Absolutely. Look at that. I'm basically an expert. You are an expert. Absolutely. <laughs> so what are your favorite apple desserts? Apple crisp yes. is like an absolute favorite. Okay, look at me struggling. Okay. This little teeny knife with this big apple. There we go. Uh, yeah, I love apple crisp. Now, uh, I'll, we'll get to it later, but are you an apple crisp with oatmeal or without person? Because that's another thing that some people do it without, some people do it with. I actually love it with, to be honest uh -huh. with you. If you're baking along with us at home, you may have had to kind of pause uh, to get to where we're at here, which is having everything peeled and chopped. So we have now have our apples that we're using for our apple pie mm -hmm. and our crisp, correct? Correct. Okay, so what are we doing now that we've chopped and peeled the apples? Okay, so now we get to flavor them with the sugar and the cinnamon and make them all delicious. Okay. But as you can see, this bowl is extremely full, so we're gonna yes. just divide into the two and I'm gonna get you to okay. give me a hand with mm -hmm. those. Literally a hand. Literally. Oops. So it's okay. The mess is always a good sign that you're doing something beautiful in the good, kitchen. Good, I like it. Okay, so now we'll just go halfway. halfway. All right. Okay. Perfect. And so what I do here, you're going to do there. Okay. And then what we'll do is just mix it all together afterwards. Sounds good. So we're going to start with our sugar. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that measure at home. Sorry. <laughs> you have to know, I don't really measure stuff. And so I like to add and taste and see if I need to add more. 
not okay. to take away. So mm -hmm. we'll start with a little bit at a time. And so are we going to, nah, we're just gonna sprinkle. Sprinkle, okay. So this is sugar that we're adding. Now because different apples have a different sweetness, you're not yes. necessarily gonna add the same amount of sugar to all of them. And so we're gonna start off with a little bit. And in the meantime, while Wendy is doing that, I'm gonna start off with my cinnamon. I love cinnamon. I know, it's so beautiful. And apple cinnamon is yes. so fall. Yes. It's great. I like a touch of vanilla, and this is pure vanilla extract in here. There you go. Oh, now how much of that? Go measure. I know. Like how much? What do you think? I didn't think? watch. Well, it's pure vanilla extract, so okay. remember that it's more flowerful and more potent, right? So that's good. You can add a little bit more, but if you want, you can mix it first and okay. then see if Let's you wanted to add first. a little bit more. Let's Absolutely. Mix it first. And now what we're going to do is add, I like a little bit of nutmeg in there. I love also nutmeg. Okay. Smells fantastic. Just a touch. And I had somebody once bring me back from travels an actual, like the nut. Oh, beautiful. That I had the little grinder. Yes. Love those. Amazing. That's usually what I use at home when, when I'm cooking, mm -hmm. but baking, this is much easier, of course. All right, there we go. Okay. Now, there are some people that add butter to this. Okay. And mm -hmm. there are some people that add a touch of flour to this. Oh, the reason yes. we add flour to this is because the apples the juices? exactly okay. are going mm -hmm. to emit their juices. And yeah. so what's going to happen is instead of us baking the apple pie in the oven with a juiciness, we're gonna just collect it all so that it gets nice and perfect in okay. there. Just a touch. Just a touch just of flour. Just a touch. Okay. Just to get some of the moisture. Right? You got it. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Great. So now this part, if you did not want to use your hands, and I understand totally why, you could just grab a wooden spoon. Okay. But you're gonna get in there with your hands. I or are you gonna? Okay. Oh no no no! Then I oh yeah. wow! I'm so yes. proud of you. Thank you. This is amazing. And I love the fragrance of this already. It smells really good. Yeah. Really, really good. And one of the other reasons I don't necessarily measure the mixing ingredients for the apple or the flavoring ingredients for the apples is because everyone likes apples to taste different. I like mine less sweet. Okay. And mm -hmm. also just my, you know, my upbringing. We don't necessarily eat a lot of sweet sweets, although a lot of Italian desserts seem to be. They're actually not. And so I prefer not so sweet desserts. Okay, I'm really smelling the vanilla and I don't know that I've ever put vanilla in ah. it, so I love that. I'm also thinking mm -hmm. that next time I'm doing an open house, yes. I should bake a pie. Imagine people coming Absolutely. in. Absolutely, well actually smelling. I have something better for you and that's oh. one of the things that we're making today. Okay. And the reason I say better is because if you have to be at an open house and uh -huh. you've got to cut a pie into pieces, well now think of the solution I have for you. You're gonna give them a nice mini size something. Oh, a mini something. A mini something. But it's something. gonna have the same smell. Oh, right? it absolutely is. Yeah. Okay, yeah, this smells fantastic. Okay, so now is the moment for tasting because okay. you wanna make sure that your apples in the filling taste as beautiful as they smell. Okay. Mmm. And you like the addition of the vanilla in there? I love the vanilla. Yeah, mm -hmm. and not not everyone mm -hmm. adds it in there. I love it in there. Oh, it's great. Just a touch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this for me is perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this aside mm -hmm. because we're gonna take our pastry dough out of the fridge and we're gonna start rolling. A big part of what we're doing is getting you to bake with us, Canada. So we hope that you're baking along at home and we'd like to see photos of you baking. So please send your photos to contact at bakingforchange.ca. We may feature them on the website, on the program. Send them in, we'd love to see. So we got our pastry dough out of the fridge. We've been chilling it for 15 minutes? Yeah, exactly. 15 minutes? Yeah. Okay, and what are we gonna do with it now? Okay, so now we are going to dust our surface. Mm -hmm. Usually when you dust, you take away dust, but in cooking or baking, you add. you're adding dust. Always add the dust. Yeah. And this is beautiful. So what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna cut it into half, because remember what I said is that this is gonna ah, make a top and a bottom. Yes. So we're gonna leave this off to the side. Okay. I'll give you the responsibility of keeping it close keep to it. you. I'll keep it. I'll protect it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
And so now we're going to start working with this one. Move that out of the way. We've got a rolling pin. Now, when I was little, there's something that I learned, and I think we've gone through this before. Uh -huh, but so. roll from the center, always from the center. If you start from here, what you're doing is you're adding pressure to the ends, mm. and you end up getting a thicker center and flatter ends. Mm. So if you start this way, and if you pay attention to any nonna, to be honest with you, including mine, they always roll with this. And truth be told, a lot of the rolling pins that they have, well, in, besides being three times the length of this, um, did not have... Turn Mine don't. There Mine is just attached. It's one solid piece That's of That's right. So, so there you go. Yeah. So we're going to just roll this out. And keep in mind that you're rolling for a specific size. Okay. Now, if you want to, and the beauty about this is if you end up making a thicker crust mm -hmm. and you don't have enough to cover the top, well, you can always decorate the top a different way. So oh, okay. with strips instead of covering it entirely. So don't ever think that you didn't make enough dough. You can always find a way of figuring it out. Okay. Because we're going to see how big we get this with the thickness that we want. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we want to make sure that even though it's nice and flaky, that we don't stick it to the rolling pin or get it stuck at all. Uh -huh. Just move some stuff out of the way. So what are some tips or tricks that you've learned to prevent that? So funny enough, um, we always dust. And the other thing is we always make sure that the rolling pin is dry. A lot okay. of people like to clean it right before they use it. Wood mm. tends to take a very long time to dry, so mm -hmm. I would recommend making sure that it's already clean before okay. you use it, and this way you know it's going to be a completely dry wood. And I noticed you redusted yes. between, so when you flipped it over, you did some more flour. Yes, okay. because I want to make sure that it doesn't stick on this side to the pin yep. or this side to the board. And right. one of those reasons is because, let's remember, there's butter in here. Right. And because there's yes. butter in here, now we're coating this with the butter and it mm -hmm. could actually stick. Okay. So we just want to make sure it doesn't. So I can tell you, as I'm rolling, I'm mm -hmm. getting very, very hungry because I smell <gasps> the cinnamon and the nutmeg in Me the apples. Me too. And the vanilla. Yes. I oh know. my gosh. I know. And does it look beautiful? Absolutely not. However, the flavor is going to be stunning. Oh, sure I you. believe you. I have no doubt. Okay. So now... We get to fill it. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so before okay. we fill it, because the apples have now been sitting there for the amount of time that we've been making the dough, mm -hmm. we're going to give them another good mix before okay. we actually pour them in there. Okay. And we're not going to use all of the apples because we are going to make this pie mm -hmm. in addition to a small crisp as well. So we're going to use three quarters of the apples for this, okay. and then we're making a small crisp, so we're going to use just one quarter of the apples for that. Sounds good. Okay, so let's take a spoon. Mix everything. We're using spoons now. Well, you know, I have to at some point. Oh, see, I smell that vanilla again. Yes. Mm -hmm. Love that. We're gonna start. I should move that here, all right? Okay, so here's another reason not to worry about the puzzle piecing of your crust. Yeah. Can you see where it started no, and finished? No. no. So it's perfectly fine. Do not hesitate to just keep going. I'll tell you another great thing when it's not like perfect around the edges is it looks homemade. Yes. I think homemade looks delicious. It does. Absolutely. So. And I would take homemade over store-bought any Me day. Me too. Any day. Unless of course it's from a farm or a farmer's market when you know it's still homemade. Yes, exactly. Okay. And I notice you are filling it like really nice and full. Okay. That's a personal preference. For me, it's absolutely a personal preference. Okay. And the other thing is you're going to notice that a lot of people are very specific on the size that you cut the apples. And I think, you know, there are a lot of people that are extremely particular about it. My um, husband being one of them. Oh, there you go. Okay. So for the purpose of us being here and not, you know, cutting apples for an entire hour, I've just cut what we've cut and they look beautiful and you're going to get a different bite in every forkful. That's true. What do you think? Is that high enough? I love it. Okay, yep. perfect. Goody Goody is a non-profit bakery that provides training and jobs for refugee youth. 
The United Nations defines youth as anyone aged 16 to 30 years old. We grew out of another nonprofit called PeaceWorks, which hosted large outdoor events for students in grades 6 to 12 and featured the refugee student performing arts group Crossing Borders. In addition to teaching baking, our board of directors decided to open a pop-up bakery selling yummy baked goodies for just $2, with 100% of the profit going to pay our student refugee staff. All of our supervisors are volunteers, and you can volunteer with us too. Check our website for details. Every Friday from 10 to 3, you can visit us at Community Christian Reform Church, 1275 Bleams Road in Kitchener, and buy Petty Fours, Giant New York Style Cookies, and chocolate from Peace by Chocolate. Petty Fours. These delicate little cakes originated in France. Their name translates to small oven, because in the past they were baked with the residual heat of brick ovens used for bread making. Our miniature cakes are Goody Goody's version of Petit Fours, the classic French dessert. We've elevated them by making our yummy three-layer vanilla mini cakes with homemade lemon curd and raspberry filling, then icing them with amazing French buttercream fondant made in a bain-marie, and decorating them with buttercream flowers to create a whole new dessert. Giant Cookies. Our version of the amazing cookies made at Levan Bakery in New York City. Birthday Cake Cookies. They're really big and delicious. Crisp on the outside and super soft and gooey on the inside. With tons of sprinkles and caramelized white chocolate to make them extra special. Fresh baked warm cookies will be available from 10 to 3 every Friday. Double Chocolate Chip Cookies. New York style cookies for chocolate lovers. Just like our birthday cake cookies, but incredibly chocolatey and served warm all day at the Goody Goody Bakery. We're selling chocolate from Peace by Chocolate. It's an amazing company founded by a Syrian refugee family in Nova Scotia. You'll be able to buy two pieces in a cellophane bag with a gold tie and a tag for just $2. Our partners include Compass Refugee Center and Conestoga College's Baking and Pastry Arts Program. And as our slogan says, do good, eat good. While our pie is baking in the oven, and which I'm so excited about, smell it. we can smell it. We're going to take the apples, some of the apples that yes. we had prepared, and make a little crisp. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. So what we're going to need for this is, and I make it very, very simple. Okay. So oats and butter and sugar and cinnamon. It's that simple. Ooh, I love it. That's okay. it. Okay, quick questions about your oats. Okay. Um, can you use, can people use like quick oats? Do you like the big flake oats? Any preferences with that? I love that question. Mm -hmm. I love questions period, especially when Wendy asks because you know, what you don't see is that when the camera turns off, she asks another hundred questions, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> which is amazing. I want to know. So I love yeah. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So these here are rolled oats. Mm -hmm. And again, this is a preference thing. I mm -hmm. prefer the rolled oats because they do take a little bit longer to cook. And okay. so they come so to... these are the big flake. These are the big the flake. Exactly. Okay. These are not the quick. Um, so these are the ones I prefer, but absolutely whatever you prefer at home. If you've only got five minutes and you want to make something really, really mm -hmm. quick, then there's another reason why you might want a different oat, right? Okay. So there Good. you go. All right. So we've got our oats here and we're going to take some butter. Mm hmm our beautiful some, some butter it is some butter absolutely <gasps> and our cinnamon i like a lot of cinnamon when i make a crisp mm -hmm. and then our sugar and then the fun mm, okay and i may crumbling made, it yes. together because you want to coat the oats in the butter uh -huh. and some people what they actually do is they will melt the butter when they make this and some people yes. make it without using butter at all I actually prefer it this way. So many options. So many options, to be honest. Okay. So, even with this, sorry, gotta do it. Gotta get in there. Gotta get, get in, in there. there. Yeah. I could just feel it so much better. All right. So, we've got it mixed together. I can smell the cinnamon. It's so okay. beautiful. 
So how do we know when it's good and mixed? Are we going for like a crumbly feel? It's not totally sticking together? Okay, so here's what it is. The oats are still down there. Once uh, everything is mixed together, then mm -hmm. at least you know. Okay. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna sort of crumble it ourselves on top of the apples. And so we just wanna make sure that everything gathers. Almost there. And yes, you're gonna make a mess. Do it's not, just what I do. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, listen. I mean, it doesn't mean that just because we're here we make a mess. We make a mess at home too. So now we've got it all mixed in there. Mm -hmm. We're breaking it apart. We're adding it to the top. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so delicious. And this here, I put right in this dish so we can spoon right out of this oh, dish without yes. even having to serve it. This, for so many people, would be a single portion serving. <laughs> Like for me, for example. Maybe. You know, if you've got a really good Hallmark movie on, then this is absolutely a single portion for sure. So how long would this go in the oven? So this here, because most of it is ready done and there's no crust top and bottom, mm -hmm. I would do 375 for about 30 minutes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So we're going to pop this in the oven. I would suggest that you have some apple cider in the meantime. By now, you are well aware of my favorite part of the show every week, and that is the tasting part. Now, since our uh, pie and our crisp are still just finishing up in the oven, we mentioned earlier that we were preparing a variety of things yeah. today. So we have some other things here ready to go that we're going to enjoy. So tell us what we're looking at here. Okay, so what we have here are the very thing that you had mentioned when you wanted to do your open house oh, apple yes. pie. Okay. I thought this was a beautiful option. Mm -hmm. It's monoporzione, so a little individual portion apple rose. So this is with a puff pastry. Okay. And there's a beauty to this, a beauty to making it, and a beauty to its taste. And what's nice about it is that you can serve them as a mini portion on an individual plate, and you don't have to worry about cutting an apple pie. So this there is a nice go. addition. When I do desserts in my home, I'm just a little extreme. I never have just one dessert. I usually have a multitude of. So I'll add stuff like this and anything apple, I mean, obviously. And the other thing we have is a beautiful classic galette. So this is also a uh, puff pastry as well. Mm -hmm. And what we've got here is, as we mentioned, it's sort of a flat apple tart. Mm -hmm. And you could add ice cream to this. You can add whatever you like to this. Or you could just cut it and serve it as is. So I noticed that these apples are sliced thinner. Yes. Not the chunks like we used in the other dishes. But basically, are we seasoning them very similarly? Very similarly, okay. yes. And I mean, it just depends. I... I'm the kind of person that if I make a variety of desserts, I like to have a little bit of difference in the mm -hmm. different desserts that I serve. Okay. And so at least you'll have a little bit of a different flavor in each one that you try. So when you try this, it's going to taste different from the galette. And these are going to taste different from the crisp and the apple okay. pie as well. Okay. All so right. go for it. Are we ready to get in Your there? Your favorite moment. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. Not too sweet. Not too sweet. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And it pairs so nicely with an apple cider. Mm-hmm. Let's end with a cheers. Cheers. To apple season. Thank you for finding time for us again today, sharing so much helpful information. Uh, lots of amazing ideas with apples. Uh, we really, really appreciate it and hope you will come back with us again and thank you for joining us today you at home thank you so much enjoy your day cheers thanks for watching and see you next week on baking for change special thanks to wendy pauls and guest baker daniela sfara production assistant crystal and community christian reformed church